Hello and welcome back to the Cocktice. In tonight's game, we're playing Harry Potter Miniatures Adventure Games from Night Models. So, uh, we'll have a look at the teams. Uh, we'll take it away with um, Harry and Chums. We've got Alistair Mad-Eye Moody. He obviously comes with Rictum Sampura. He also, I've bought him a Pugno, Petrificus Totalis, and a Latra Ascendra. He's also got uh, an Elder Wand, and he's also got an Exploding Potion. We've got Argus Filch with Mrs. Norris. Uh, we've got Harry, of course. Um, he comes with his Expecto Patronum. I've also got him Finite Incantatum and Bombarda Maxima. We've got Pomona Sprout. Uh, she comes with Incendio. I've also got Defendo. And she's also got um, Exploding Potion, of course. And finally, we've got Hermione. She comes with Counterspell. I've also picked up Protego for her and Episky. Ips yeah, Episky. I'm pretty, I think that's how you pronounce it. She's obviously my kind of support character tonight who's going to hang around and attempt to keep everyone alive. On the Death Eaters side tonight, we of course have Lord Voldemort himself. He's also coming with an Elder Wand because there's no rules to say that both sides can't have the Elder Wand, which is a bit daft, but um, it's, it's an absolute must-have artifact. Um, he's got Elytra Ascendra as well. Uh, stupefy apparition. His three uh, Horcruxes are Salazar Slytherin's Lockerit, Marvello Gaunt's Ring, and we've got a Harry Potter Horcrux. And Harry's obviously on the table. I've also brought along Bellatrix Lestrange. She's got the Fervent Follower rule, which um, I've used to purchase her Adava Cadaver for free. She has Crucio, Crucio on her card, and she's also got Finite Incantatum and Silencio. Then we've got Barty Crouch Jr. Uh, comes with Dark Mark. We also have Counterspell and Serpent Sortier, um, which can sign some kind of useful um, support spells, really. And finally, you can't have Voldemort without Nagini, uh, who comes with Poison Fangs and a huge amount of cunning, uh, and that's really going to help power up the um, bad guys today. And here we are, all set up for the first turn. We have got... Uh, Bart is obviously set up slightly ahead because of his impersonation rule. Gives him up to four space of movement. I've only used three in this case. Uh, and the Hogwarts crew are set up, essentially all in front of Hermione, just to make sure um, she stays alive. <laughs> Basically. Keep that going. So, I've already done all the magic... Um, phase stuff I need to do. I've replenished my power pool. I've got a couple extra for Voldemort. Um, each friendly model with at least one cunning add one dark power so he adds three. So Voldemort has a lot of power. Uh, there are no upkeep. There's no cooldown crocs. So we'll go on to the initiative phase. So we add up the cunning value of all of the characters we've got on. So Voldemort is... Uh, 4 for Nagini, 6 including Barty, 9 for Bellatrix, 10 for himself, plus 1 for the Elder Wand, 11. Uh, the heroes are essentially 2 each, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, plus 1 for the Elder Wand as well on Mad-Eye Moody, so that is also 11. And in the event of a tie, the hero gets the initiative. So it is off with the Hogwarts team. So we're going to start with Harry. He's going to move... One, two, three, to there, and then he's going to cast Expecto Patronum for three power, or two power plus his three one. So he gets three dice for that. He gets a lucky dice as well because of the Professor rule. He needs near Moody, who isn't a professor. He's near, <laughs> he's near Sprout, who is a professor. One, two, three squares away. So we're looking for a difficulty of four here. That makes it, he's got an extra dice. It still makes it. So he's got two successes from the dice. He's got two successes on his cards. That's four successes. We have a Patronus off. And we're going to place it nice and central. So one, 
two, three, one, two, yeah. Make sure everyone gets in that as they move. So that goes there. So that's Harry's activation over. It's over to our villains and the Death Eaters. So I think we'll go with the easy one is Nagini. She's just going to go one, two, three. So it's back over to the Hogwarts team. There's nothing else for Nagini to do. She can't move any faster than that, unfortunately. So I think we're going to use Hermione. She is going to cast Protego to start with on Professor Sca uh, Sprout. Again, she gets three dice plus a lucky dice. So roll them, take the lowest away. We've got three successes there, plus another one, four successes, plus her two mastery, six successes. She only needs to get difficulty four, so she has protected the Professor. Professor's gonna take a marker there. Sprout, unfortunately, is quite low defense. Uh, she's then gonna move, I'm gonna move up. One, two, three to there. It's over to Death Eaters again. Um, haven't got a huge amount to do with these guys. Bellatrix will go. She's going to go one, two, three. Um, she hasn't got any spells to cast. So it's just going to be that. Back over to the Hogwarts team. We'll use Filch. He's going to go one, two, three across here. And then he will place Mrs. Norris uh, around about there block up this centre a little bit. So it's going to be Voldemort. He's going to move three. One, two, three. To centre this. He's then going to start spending some power. So we will first attempt to apparate. When I say attempt to apparate, he's going to roll some dice and succeed. The Dark Lord gets three dice. He's got a mastery of three. He's also got the Elder Wand, which gives him two automatic successes. Oh, that's lucky. So we've got one success there. Um, so that gives him six successes and Apparate is only a difficulty of four. So he gets to move eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's now going to attempt another spell. He's going to Adava Kadavra Hermione, which is harsh, I know. However, he's Lord Voldemort. So she is going to react. She's going to use her counter spell and spend three power. So counter spell is difficulty of five currently because it's four for the Adava Kadavra plus one. Hermione's got three dice plus a lucky dice for being nearby a professor. She gets, she throws one away and she's got one additional dice for that six. If this is a three or more, we've stopped it. It's a four, that is five successes from Hermione. That makes the counter spell and prevents an Adava Kadavra. Superb. So it's back over to Hogwarts team. We're going to go with Mad Eye Moody. He's going to come one, two to here. Because I'm playing solo on this game, I'm going to have to deal with the dueling deck slightly differently. What I'm going to do in tonight's game is the defender will draw three cards and select their favourite and the attacker will draw a single card and just play that. Uh, first of all Mad-Eye Moody is going to attempt to cast Arictum Sampura. So it's combat spell, target model reduces its defence by one till the end of the round and you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So I'm going to try and batter Voldemort down while he's in range. So first of all we're going to draw. So Voldemort will draw three cards and select one. And Moody will draw the top card. And now we'll roll for the attack. So Moody has three dice. Uh, he's on Master of Three, plus two for his Elder Wand. So we're on five successes already. Got six, seven, and roll an additional dice. Eight, nine successes for Moody. So Dark Lord, drawing three dice. He gets two successes. Sorry, I forgot to do. Uh, he gets two lucky mystery dice. So we throw one, two dice away. So he's got three successes added to his defense of two, gives him a total of five versus Moody's nine. So Moody has four additional successes. Rictum Sampura is only a difficulty eight spell, a difficulty eight spell, a difficulty zero spell. 
Um, so we have successfully reduced Voldemort down to a single um, defence. That cost me one power. And at the end of that activation, so um, Voldemort got the add two lucky mystery dice to his roll. Um, that should have been minus one automatic success as well. So he definitely, definitely lost that one. However, Moody drew, after the action is completed, remove one power from the opponent's power pool. Doesn't really matter. It's just more than enough power for Voldemort to do his thing. So Moody is an expert wizard, so he gets to another free spell. Uh, and what he's going to do this time is Petrificus Totalis on Voldemort. So we'll pop that onto cooldown. We'll spend two power. So you could do, you could right do with another lucky roll like that. That's not bad. Oh, I've not drawn cards. So he's currently got four successes there, which adds to his existing five. So he's casting a spell. So that takes him up to nine successes. Lord Voldemort is down to a defense of one and three dice. That's not bad. Oh, that's getting better. No. He's got one, two, three, four successes there. We take that away from Moody's nine. We've got five successes from Moody. That beats the um, difficulty for Petrificus Totalis. So Voldemort has been petrified. Oh, he's still. I thought he's. I keep forgetting to look at these cards. Um, Voldemort gained two automatic successes, but it wasn't enough to defend against that. Um, Moody would have still had three successes, which is more than enough from Petrificus Totalis. So we're going to rely on Bellatrix getting up. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. She can't do it next turn. Sphera Incantatum is range of four. So I've got um, Barty. So Barty's going to come up. He's going to go one, two, three. Handily, he's got the counter spell, um, which is no use at all. We've got Serpent Sortier. It's not really worth doing anything like that at the moment. We need to get a bit, a bit closer. So we are back over to Hogwarts team. We just have Pomona Sprout to go. So she's going to move up. She's going to move one, two, three. That keeps her within two of the Patronus. And she will spend one power to use the only spell that really she can use, which is Defendu. That is a combat spell against Volders. So she's got two successes already. Vol this, no, this, this is not a duel because Voldemort's, all of his stats are now reduced to zero. And from his stats, as I understand it, it includes all the mastery things. He's got no defense. He's simply got some dice. Um, so we'll see how this goes. So she scores three successes there, plus her two mastery gives her five successes in total. Voldemort gets three dice. He gets two successes only, so it reduces uh, Sprouts down to three. Defender has a difficulty of zero uh, and therefore goes off and he suffers one magical damage. Which actually, yeah, just realized he's got magic immunity one. Don't shoot him with magical damage. Right, okay, so in that case, uh, we're not gonna damage Voldemort. Whoops, that was a waste of power, but no, either, neither here nor there. That's the end of the round. So I will tidy up tokens and things and we'll get on to the next round. So we're into turn two. I've done the power, um, Prevention of power pulls for both sides. I've got to pay upkeep now. So the only upkeep spell I think we're going to use is we're going to pay the upkeep on Expecto Patronum. That costs me three. Uh, that's that. Advance the cooldown clock on all the spells. So we're into the initiative phase. The Hogwarts crew have the initiative. They've got a cunning of 11 with Voldemort petrified and his cunning reduced to zero. Um, the Death Eaters team only have nine. So we are back over to Hogwarts team and we're going to start with Professor Sprout, unsurprisingly enough. I've just got to read the Voldemort rules. Okay, so I did forget something last round. Um, 
I forgot to look at his Horcruxes and because he has the Salazar, Salazar Slytherin's ring, he does get plus one cunning. He would have had more cunning last round. If they would have gone first, I don't think it would have made a huge difference because I'd have probably played out much the same sort of turn, just with them going slightly first. Okay, so we're going to activate Sprout first. And the first thing she's going to do is throw a explosion, exploding potion at Lord Voldemort. So he's in range, he's in line of sight. If his target is an enemy model, make an attack roll. Add one success for each potioner level the user has. So she has potioner three. She gets five successes in total. Lord Voldemort rolls his defense dice. He's got no defense because his stats are at zero because he's petrified. So it's a simple dice roll. He needs to get more than three, uh, more than five. <laughs> oh dear. Lord Voldemort takes an exploding potion to the face. An exploding potion deals two plus X physical damage to the target model. And X is equal to the user's potion ear level. So he, Lord Voldemort would normally take five damage at this point, which would kill him. However, he has Morvello Gaunt's ring, which reduces the amount of damage he takes by one. So he has taken four damage. So we go through the markers, he gets one of those, two, three, four. So he's currently on his last point of damage. If he takes one more hit, he is down. Uh, and because Professor Sprout has the uh, Herbology Professor rule, um, she's not going to discard her exploding potion. So that's the end of her activation. She's got nothing else to do. I don't want to use Incendio yet because everything's a bit close. It's over to the Death Eaters. And we really need to get Bellatrix up with Finite Incantatum, but one, two, three, one, two, three, four. She is one square out of range of Voldemort, which presents a problem. So I think for now, I'm just going to delay and we'll have Nagini go one, two, three, like that. Back over to the Hogwarts crew. And I think we'll start with, oh, we'll start with Moody. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with Moody. Let's try and um, knock Voldemort down as quick as possible because we need to knock his whole crocs, crocs off as quickly as we can this turn. Um, otherwise, next turn, uh, Bellatrix will be able to get to him and hopefully find, find out incantatum him, her, him, she will. Yeah, you get it. Um, so Moody's going to go, he's first of all going to stand still and he's got an exploding potion as well, so he's going to throw that. He's only potion here two, so it's three dice plus two. It's a good three dice though. So we get four successes there, plus his two gives him six successes in total. Voldemort will roll to defend. He's straight off his dice. So he gets one, two, three, four successes compared to Moody's five. So that does four damage to Voldemort. Minus one is three damage. That would kill Voldemort. Um, what that we now do is we're going to remove one of his Horcruxes. And I think I'll remove Salazar Slytherin's locket because that's the one that improves his cunning. So Voldemort is not yet dead but he's sat on his last point of damage. Still moody, so that is his basic action, which is to throw potion. He now can do an advanced action, which is spell casting. He is going to use, I'll use a pug now, because it's short range, just in case I need to use something against someone else later. Um, so I'll pay me, pay me two power. Three dice, he's adding five to this. Um, so that's two, that's seven in total. Blood on what will defend, he's on dice only. He's got two successes, so that leaves Moody with five successes. That's more than enough for a Pugno. That suffers, means he suffers three damage, minus, so it's, this is three physical damage. So that's minus one from Mavello Gaunt's ring, so he takes two damage, and that would kill him again. Um, so we'll make him discard Mavello Gaunt's ring. So it's back over to the Death Eater's turn, and I think it's going to be Barty Jr. He's going to go one, two, three. How many do it there? 
one, two, three, over to here. I think he will use Serpent Sortier anyway. Just that's going to cost him two power. It's a difficulty of four. We've got two. So that's two mastery plus two success on the dice. That does do the four. So we're going to place a snake marker just there next to Volders. Um, so if anyone ends their movement next to that, they get the poison one effect. So that just blocks up this and prevents people moving around a little bit. Over to Hogwarts team. Now I've made a slight mistake here. I've put all my spells that are damaging on basically two characters, which was a bit foolish. So we'll go with Filch, I think. He's going to go one, two, three. Over to here. So he's outside. Oh no, he's in two. Is that two of that? He's two of that. Maybe he'll stop back here then. Maybe I'll place Mrs. Norris there. Move there. One, two, three. Yeah, that still works. And he's outside of two of the Serpent Sortia. So he's back over to the villainous team. Bellatrix. One, two, three. She gets herself to there. So it's Hermione to go, and she hasn't got a huge amount to do. She's only got a Pisky to cast. So I think she's. I kind of need to keep her back because she's not my kind of scoring character. So I think she's just going to sit there. She's not going to actually activate. So that is the end of round two. So we're back for round three. So the Hogwarts team have 11 cunning currently and 11 power. And then both Hermione and Harry gain their free one. On Voldemort's team, we get four for Nagini, six for including Crouch, seven, eight, nine for Bellatrix Lestrange. So it would appear that the Hogwarts crew is going to go first. We'll do all our cooldowns. And I'll do my upkeep for Expecto Patronum. So we're all ready for the first activation. It's Hogwarts taking the lead again. We're going to start with Mad-Eye Moody. Um, continue to kick Voldemort while he's um, all frozen up. So we're going to use Alatra Ascendra um, against Voldemort. It's going for Mad-Eye Moody. He's got plus five to this. Um, so he scores three there. Four. So he's on nine successes there. Voldemort. Rolls two successes, three successes in total, taking that down to six successes. Alatrix Sendra has a difficulty of one, so that succeeds. Voldemort takes two damage. He dies again. I'll discard his third and final Horcrux. He's now out of Horcruxes. One more successful piece of point of damage, and Voldemort is out of the game. We're over to our villains, and so for the Villain's turn, we're going to use Bellatrix. One, two, three. Movement to there. She's then going to use two power to use Finite Incantatum. She's a master of three, so she needs a single success here. She scores three successes. That takes her up to six. We successfully cast that, and we can remove all effects from a target model. So we have Un petrified Voldemort and she's a master she's not a master wizard she's an expert wizard so she's going to spend four more power to attempt at Adava Kedavra Sprout one two three four we're in range oh it's a bad roll no it's not much better three successes added to her three gives her six successes there Sprout is going to need one heck of a roll here she is only defense one, so um, could have a difficulty two. I'm going to need to get four successes in total. She gets two, three, four. So she's got four successes there in total. Okay, so we'll add the dueling cards in. So Bellatrix gets plus two automatic successes. Um, Sprout gets a cooldown delay, so which we'll use afterwards. So we've got four successes, five, uh, so minus from eight. That leaves Bellatrix with four successes still. That's more than enough for Adava Kedavra. Um, if successful, the target model is removed from play, ignoring all damage rules. Sprout is out. Finally, we've got 
a we can um, after the action is completed move the cooldown clock on one of the opponent's spells back one step so we'll move Voldemort's Adava Cadavra back one step that was a pretty awful blow for our heroes so I think it's up to Harry to do this he's feeling lucky not that lucky but a little bit lucky he's got no professor now unfortunately so move to there does he need to move yeah i'll move him to there so he's got line of sight he's going to cast bombarda maxima it's quite a difficult spell this so we'll see how harry does um he's going to spend one of his own power and three extras it's difficulty of two we're going to cast it on bellatrix oh it's a bad roll for harry one success that takes him up to three successes only he also, he's going to fail unfortunately bellatrix even with triple rubbish, she got two. She adds that to her defense of two. Well, that's, only, that's four, isn't it? So she's got a total, a total of four successes. Remove that from Harry's five. That leaves him with one success. So Bellatrix has, hang on, one, two, three, four, five successes there against Harry's five. So unless he draws a plus several successes, Nope, he gets plus three damage if active model, minus two automatic successes. So unfortunately, Harry, you failed to bombard a maxima them all, which was your chance to score as well, because that would have probably scored spell slinging. There. So we're back over to Villa's side, and I think it may as well be Nagini. I'll just move her up around there. Um, back over to our heroes. I think we'll use Filch. I, think, I don't think Filch has been this round. So he's going to move one, two, three. And he'll place his Norris over there. In fact, if he places two, three, place him right between these two. I might be able to outrun. In fact, and what he'll also do, he'll use Stop on Nagini. Physical attack, bonus one. So he scores two successes there, plus one is three successes in total. Nagini is a defensive one. She gets two successes, three successes, so it is a draw. Bonus one, damage zero, range three. So we, we apply the slow two effect. So it's essentially she's zero movement now for next turn. Back over to our villain aside, and I have got Lord Voldemort to use this round because he's been unpetrified. So he has got two spells to cast, and he can cast them both just about. First of all, he's going to Alertra Ascendra on Moody. So that's going to cost him two power. He gets two successes there, added to his mastery of three is five, added to his elder wand is six, seven. Seven successes, difficulty one. So Moody needs to get six successes in total. That's quite a tall order. It definitely is a tall order. Um, he gets three successes, so that reduces it down to four. So Moody takes two points of damage. Before I do the actual damage, I'll just back that off a bit. So for the dueling cards, um, Moody is playing add to Lucky Mystery Dice, so we'll roll them. They're no better at all. So he is still hit. Let's see what voldor has got. Um, inflicts plus two damage if active model. That takes it up to four damage and puts Moody on his last point of damage. Voldas will then spend his last power that he's got access to to do Stupefy. On Moody. Let's see if we can knock him out of the game. That would be successful, wouldn't it? One, two successes there. Other two is five. We're back up to seven again. Moody needs a good roll here. So Moody has got three successes there. From his dueling card, he's got another two, so that's five successes. From his defence, that's six, seven successes. That reduces 
Voldemort down to zero successes. I think in the Wizarding War rulebook, that is a zero. Hang on. Common spells work differently in the Wizarding War rulebook. Here to successfully cast a spell, you must only you must uh, only equal or beat the total successes of the opponent's defense roll. The remaining successes, zero, must equal or beat the spell's difficulty. Yep, so that does beat the spell's difficulty. That is Mad-Eye Moody out of the game. Things are not looking good for Harry and co. They were so close to killing Voldemort. And I think it would have been game over at that point. That is a pity. That is a real pity. So the, the only character to go was, um, was Hermione, who would have tried to heal uh, Moody had he not just died. Barty Crouch hasn't been. He's got Dark Mark and Counter Spell. There's no point casting either of those. So what I'm going to do, I think, for tonight's game, I think it's quite clear that um, I've messed the spells up a little bit on their selection. Um, so I think I'm going to call it there. It's on the other end of round three. I'm pretty sure to look at next round. What comes up next round? Apparate comes around. Yeah, the damage spells aren't quite in the right order. So next turn's going to be a bit of a boring turn while I try and shuffle people into position. I think it's six turn limit for the Wizarding War rules. So what would happen there? We'd certainly get some models into land grab territory and find the lair territory. So it's most likely that the Death Eaters would score four points and um, the Hogwarts crew would probably score... I think only one. We can't do, can he do a Wisdom 10 challenge? No, he can't, not on his own. Yeah, so I think uh, there, there is very little here to stop Death Eater's team. I made a, a massive mistake with the spells. I've, I've stacked the too many combat spells on too few characters. So Hermione really should have had a combat spell instead of all her defensive spells. Because you're just wasting a character all the time, even if it's something fairly light. So I'd probably swap them around a little bit, potentially take Defendo off Sprout and give her a Pisky or Protego instead, probably Protego. It was very, very close. I did forget Moody's free potion. Yeah, you can take a free, one extra potion of level one or two, and I don't think I took that. Um, so yeah, there's a point spare essentially in the team. I think that's why he, why he had an anti-paralysis potion, because I forgot he could have had it. Um, also needs to check his spell book because I, I thought you could take a number of spells up to your mastery, but he's only got a two slot spell book. So I, I think I need to jig the teams around a little bit for next time. Just balance them out a little bit. Um, I kept forgetting Voldemort's um, uh, Holcruxes, which was uh, slightly stupid. So I'll just show you the, the table state here. So the, the big issue with the game now is we've got everything on cooldown, most things over here on cooldown, and almost everything over this side as well. So We've got loads and loads and loads of things on cooldown. So the fourth turn, very, very little is going to happen. And so when you're playing a six turn tournament game, um, things like a Dava Cadaver can only go off on turn one and turn five, six. You've got very few chances for some of these big spells to go off because it takes so long to cool down. Now I did also forget to use the extra deck and there's some speedy up cooldown things in there. I will try and remember that last time, next time. Um, and I hope the game looks interesting enough. It's a grey board. I might flip the board to one of the more colourful sides um, just because it looks slightly more interesting. Um, it'd be really great. Comment below. Um, tell me what sort of game you want me to play. Um, I'd be really interested to see do you want me to carry on playing uh, kind of more fixed tournament format games where um, I'll pick two Wizarding Wars style sides. I went to 65 points today rather than 50 just to buy an extra character in, because otherwise the um, Death Eaters crew is just three models and it's a bit dull to play. Um, essentially, you attempt to kill someone in the first turn with Voldemort, and then Bellatrix tries to kill someone on the second turn, and then Voldemort tries to kill someone on the fourth turn, fifth turn. Um, and so it's a bit of a dull way of playing, um, but it's very, very effective in a tournament. The Hogwarts team I brought today, um, with the exception of Hermione, to make, to make Hermione out, uh, and it's a 
few different spells in there, but broadly speaking, it was the same team I took to a tournament and Sprout managed to one-shot Dumbledore on the first turn of the game. <laughs> it was just horrific. Um, it, that was basically game over because he'd brought um, uh, Dumbledore to be his big powerhouse. And... But anyway, there you go. So first time in a while, there's Harry Potter miniature adventure game from Night Models. And thanks for joining us here at the Clock Dice. Why not like this video and add a comment below? It really helps boost the channel. And while you're at it, if you click on the icon below, you can subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates as soon as they're live. Why not check out some of our other videos and playlists? You can click on the ones on screen right now. Take care and we'll see you next time.